ठीक है नेक्स्ट ऑनवर्ड्स वंस यू स्टार्ट लॉग इन बाय योर गो टू मीटिंग सेटअप देन यू विल गेट अ ऑप्शन एंड मेक योर ऑर्गेनाइजर सो यू कैन स्टार्ट द मीटिंग आल्सो देयर फाइन सो पवन एज आई टोल्ड यू हैव ए आइडियाज ऑफ यू नो जावा आपने क्लिप्स पे कभी काम किया है यू हैव आइडिया ऑफ क्लिप्स या आई मीन आई यस आई मीन आई हैव आइडिया बट इट्स लाइक See the thing is, uh, I had started learning Java uh, a few months back. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, because of uh, this Hadoop thing only, mm -hmm. and uh, initially I had worked on Java for a year, but that was almost ten years back. So I have idea of Eclipse, but uh, yeah, um, I think we can start from the beginning. I mean, Maven and all, I I was doing doing on my own. ठीक है ठीक है फाइन सो एज वी नो टू स्टार्ट द जावा वी नीड टू फर्स्ट इंस्टॉल द जेडीके इन आवर सिस्टम एंड द लेटेस्ट वर्जन ऑफ जेडीके 1.8 सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू नीड टू इंस्टॉल द जेडीके इनसाइड योर सिस्टम एंड लेट मी शो यू हाउ द सेटअप इज लुक्स लाइक सो फॉर अ प्रोबेबली इन माय सिस्टम आई हैव इंस्टॉल द जेडीके 1.7 But you can install JDK 1.8 also. There are certain features they have included uh, in JDK 1.8. But apart from that, almost everything is same. So if you see the JDK 1.7 setup, this is the 1.7 setup. You can mm -hmm. freely download from the Oracle website also because it's an open resource. And uh, then after this, is, this setup is separate for the 32-bit operating system and the 64-bit operating system. So you can download accordingly according to your uh, system. After installation of this, you will get one uh, automatically one folders. And by default, it is going to install in the C drive. But I will suggest you, it's not good advice to install your Java into the C drive because you know there are two types of software. One is utility software, another one is the development software. Utility software is a those software which is dependent on your operating system. Like your Microsoft Office, VLC Media Player kinds of software. So, what is wrong with those software? Like, if you are formatting or operating system, then later it will not work. Again, you have to reinstall those software, which is utility. So, whatever utility softwares are there, that is always advisable to install in C drive because uh, once you are formatting, then automatically C drive folder will be also formatted. But Java is one of the development software, so I will suggest you try to install it apart from C drive. If you are going to format your operating system, then next version of operating system also it will work perfectly. That's the reason I have installed the Java into the E drive itself. You can see this is my Java folder where I have installed uh, uh, Java. So if you open this, then you will get a lots of folder along with the JDK installation, and among them one folder is very very important. That is the Bean folder. So this bean folder is just stands for binary folder, and where you can see the lots of commands and lots of commanded file. Among this file, right now we need to bother about the two ones. One is Java, and another one is the Java C. Java C is for compilation purpose, and Java is for running purpose. So apart from that, also there is a lots of Java doc and all are there. Even all commands, I don't know. Uh, some of which are the important one for you that anyhow you will be uh, getting in touch. Currently, you have to bother about the Java C and Java. Java C is for compilation purpose and Java is for running purpose. Make sure that you should not allow to delete any of this uh, installed file, otherwise your JDK will not work perfectly. Okay. Okay. So uh, this one question, as you said, I should try to install it in uh, other drive. The thing is, uh, I am using my official laptop, and there is just one drive. And as of now, uh, uh, no problem, no problem. I, I told you it's just a suggestion. It's not like that, man. Literally, you have to install it. So next time, you have to keep it in mind. These things, you know. So again, I'm saying by default it is taking the C drive, and that is uh, whatever your first drive itself. So don't bother about that. It's my only suggestion and my information. I just want to share with you. It's always good practice to install the Java apart from C drive or apart from your operating system drive. So if you have installed already, ignore it. No problem. After installation of this Java, you have to do a small things. That is setting the path into your system. If you are not setting the path perfectly, then every time you have to set the path in command prompt. So how to set the path? That is also interesting. So 
wherever you have installed Java, go to that same location. Like you have installed in C drive, then go to the still bean folder location. Even though you have installed anywhere, you will have in the bean folder definitely. So go to the bean folder and you can see here, copy this path. If you click here, copy this path like this way, control C or you can click on this, copy. Then go to my computer. After right clicking on my computer, you will get one option with the name of properties. Open this properties. Then after you will find one advanced system settings. You have to click on this advanced system settings. Under advanced system settings, you will find one environment variables. Click on environment variable. And under the user variable section there, you have to click on new. And under new, you have to give the path. The variable name should be path and what variable value should be same, whatever you have copied, that you have to paste here. So this is the second thing you have to do after installation of Java and it's mandatory because you are working in any system or any uh, PC, then this path is important. Otherwise, every time you have to save your program inside the bean folder. Once you save the path, then you are free to run your program from anywhere, any place from your system. So this is called setting the path or setting the environment variable. So I have already set the path here. Can you see path? You try Java Bing. After setting the path, what you need to do, or if you're going to any uh, company, they want to just check whatever system they have provided you, they are already having the uh, JDK installed or not, then open the command prompt cmd and under command prompt you have to write simply java hyphen version. So if the system is already installed JDK and somebody has already uh, you know set the path also and if you write java hyphen version then automatically it will give you the version of java which is installed in that particular system. So can you see here it is giving the java version 1.7 as I told you I have installed the JDK 1.7. So first of all you have to check this. If it is not there then you have to install the JDK and then after you have to set the path. Because Eclipse is always dependent on your JDK. If you want to work in Eclipse even though you have to install the JDK and you have to set the path also because Eclipse is internally checking the same path and using the same JDK whichever is installed inside your system. The Eclipse is one of the IDE. IDE is nothing but Integrated Development Environment. So like this Eclipse we have a lots of IDE like NetBeans, MyEclipse, uh, you can say RAID, then after the J developer, lots of ID is there, integrated development environment. But Eclipse is widely used in the industry, 90% industry is using for Java the Eclipse. And of course, it is a very smart editor or uh, you will feel that there are lots of shortcut keys also. So you will enjoy this, the development time is going to be reduced. And uh, NetBeans is also, uh, many of the companies are using and if you're going to install the NetWins, then along with the NetWins itself, lots of things like your Java is also going to be installed. So in NetWins, you don't need to take care about separately installation of JDK, separately installation of server and all. They are going to install by default uh, during the time of uh, NetWins install. But Eclipse is not doing those things. So you have to first install JDK, then after Eclipse. Are you getting or not? Pavan? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. So uh, just one question, this, um, uh, as far as I remember, whenever I install Java, the uh, environment path gets set automatically or we have to... Uh, no, 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 it's never going to be uh, set automatically. You have to keep in mind, you have to manually set your path into your system. Operating system is also having certain limitations and every software is also having limitations. So if it is possible, then you know any, any software can uh, utilize your system resources. So it's never, uh, from a security point of view, we'll see this, then it's not good. Till now, user is not allowing to that particular software to be uh, rule over the system. They can't do automatically. This is operating system features. 
ठीक है सो नाउ आई विल शो यू आफ्टर इंस्टॉलेशन ऑफ जावा हाउ वी कैन ओपन द इक्लिप्स अगेन इक्लिप्स इज ओपन रिसोर्स इनिशियली इट वाज आई मीन डेवलप्ड बाय द आईबीएम कंपनी हेलो और आईबीएम अब योर वॉइस इज वेस्टिंग दैट टाइम आईबीएम की वॉइस आई आईबीएम uh it seems like now you are logged in by 31 okay hmm yeah this one is connected okay fine so you are comfortable with this no i'm not disconnected yes i'm not disconnected by uh, four this is not one uh -huh. can you hear me properly now hello Yeah. Yeah. Look at. Ah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I can hear you, but your voice is breaking compared to previous. Hello. Hello. Ah. ठीक है. आप सुन रहे हो मैं? Mr. Pavan, can you hear me? हेलो 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 पवन आर इन देयर Pavan, are you there? Hello. ID and Eclipse is the widely used ID. Initially, it was run by the IBM company, but currently it is handled by some another company. I, I forgot actually what exactly. So let me show you the Eclipse one. Latest version of Eclipse is uh, you know Mars M A R S. The latest version of Eclipse is Mars, but I have uh, you know the older version uh, currently. That is Luna. Before Luna, there was a uh, Juno, Kepler, Helio, Galileo. Lots of versions are there, and in every version, they have worked on to enhance uh, lots of new features. Uh, so I will show you how exactly you have to open the Eclipse. After installation of Java, you will find the. You can again download the Eclipse from the uh, any website. I mean, Eclipse website. You can easily download. So. This is the Luna and this is the Juno. The workspace I have created in Juno. So what you need to do? Right click on this. Yeah, uh, I mean zip file. Extract here. Then you will get this folder automatically eclipse. And under that you will find this icon. So what I did here, I have dragged this icon and I have put into the toolbar here. So next time onwards, what I need to do is simply I have to click on this one. After clicking on this one, it will first ask you what is your workspace. So you can change your workspace from here. Anywhere you can give d colon slash morning batch or whatever workspace name you want to give, you can give there. Click OK. And make sure that this Eclipse will open once your JDK is installed. If you are not installing the JDK first, and then you are going to try to open the Eclipse, it will give you the message: JDK is not installed in our system like this. So since we have already installed, that's the reason Eclipse is going to start loading the workspace. Okay? 
Uh, yeah, just one thing. Uh, so this Eclipse, when we install, as I said, we have to set the workspace. So this workspace, I mean, usually, how do we do? I mean, it's like for every project. We create no, 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 no. It's one time. Like, no, it's one time for one project. And under this project, we will create lots of models which show you. So workspace is the only one time job. Next time you have to select the same workspace to start working on that. So I've selected the workspace, then automatically Eclipse will show you this welcome window to you. Try to close this welcome window. What you need to do, go to file, new, and click on project. So if you click on project, the first option itself, it will give you the Java project. Click on Java project. Then after it will ask to give me the project name. You can give project name anything. I'm going to give the application one as a project name. And then after click on finish. Once you click finish, then it will ask you a small window to change your perspective. Actually, in Eclipse, you can develop a J2E program also, that is advanced Java also, and the core Java program also. So currently, by default, mm -hmm. the perspective is set into J2E. Can you see here this site? It is Java EE. So it is asking you, since you have created the project for core Java, so you want to check, change this perspective, then you have to say yes. It is first time once again. Where did it show? Because you are, uh, I mean, uh, you are talking a little faster and your screen is slow, I mean, uh, I mean, it's not in sync. In the right, in the right corner of Eclipse, can you see my cursor wherever it is? J Java EE and Java. There are two things. It's slow, I mean, uh, I think after you click, I see here. Mm -hmm. So something is wrong with your system or internet is speed also. That's what. Oh, I was just wondering. I mean, my internet speed is fine, but I mean, it's eight eight Mbps connection. I was just wondering. I mean, yeah, I'm missing. So anyway. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. So everyone else, I mean, no one else has this problem as such. No, no. The class is going on very well. Uh, every batch. Okay. By the same system, by the same resources, <laughs> by the same internet also. Take care. Yeah. Can you see this? So what I'm trying to say in Eclipse, we have a mode of core Java as well as the advanced Java also. So here is the perspective showing. If you click on this Java EE, then it is advanced Java mode. If you click on Java then it is a core Java mode. So currently we have to work in core Java, so I have selected the core Java. Okay, simply Java. Now, after creating of uh, application, automatically Eclipse will create one folder for you with the name of application one. Inside that, it will create some more folder. To see the better structure of your project. Paman, can you follow me properly? Hello. Hello. Yeah, I don't know what is going on. Mm. Okay, fine. Uh, now can you hear me properly? Hello. Sorry, yeah. Can you hear me properly now? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay, so I was saying. In Eclipse, we have a mode of development. 
So there is two more currently. You can see in my screen J2 EE and Java. So J2 is for advanced Java development and this is for core Java. So since we are bothering about the core Java, so let's select the Java first. Now, if you want to see the better structure after selecting this Java and you have created one application with the name of application one, then automatically Eclipse will create one folder for you. To see the better structure, go to window, show view, and there is one option with the name of navigator. If you click on this navigator, then same application one will be again appear here and try to open now. So you know very well in Java case, there's a two types of file. One is source file, another one is the binary file. Dot Java file and dot class file. So after compilation of any dot Java file, we are getting automatically one dot class file. And that class file is nothing but it is a byte code. You know or not? Right. Huh. So what Eclipse is doing, they are saying you have to develop your dot Java file here and automatically I will shift your dot class file into the bin folder. So this is the Eclipse structure you don't need to bother about. You have to simply give your application name and Eclipse will do the job for you. It will automatically create a separate folder for you that is bin and src. Now I'm going to develop the first hello world programming into the Eclipse. What you need to do? Right click on this src new and under new we will see one class option. So try to select the class and give the class name anything. I am going to give the class name as a hello. You can give class name anything but again there is a industry rule. There is a naming convention. The first letter of your class should must be the capital letter. It's not mandatory once again but it's always a good practice. You have to give the first letter of your class name as a capital letter and try to be habitual to give the class name first letter as a capital letter. Now, don't give anything, don't give any Java or something. Try to give simply hello and click on finish. Or you can give any class name. After clicking on finish, automatically this will create one file for you that is hello.java and this is the structure of your class with open braces and closed braces. Let me increase the font size for you. How to increase this? Window, prefixes. In the search box, I have to write the font, color and fonts. Basic, AA text font. I'm selecting bold and 14. Okay, apply, okay. So this is your class. Pavan, can you see? Yes. Okay. Now, so Eclipse will automatically create one template of your class for Java program development and that's what we got it. Now what you need to do is you have to give a main method. So if you are in the another IDE like NetBeans or another, you have to write completely public a static white main then after under this you have to write the string args yes or no because we require main yeah. method for running the program and you have to write this whole thing but if you are in eclipse then no need to write this complete public static white main and all simply press m a i n and then after press control space bar after writing main, you have to press control space bar, enter. In one sort, Eclipse will write the main method for you. So there's a lots of shortcut key and one of the shortcut key is nothing but your writing the main method. Always remember the shortcut key is control plus space bar button. Let's say now we want to write the system dot out dot printer and for getting the output. So in another editor you have to write completely system dot out dot print align. but now you have to write here S Y S O that's all and control space bar once again Eclipse will write the system dot out dot print align. 
and that is the reason it is the first choice for every developer ठीक है so uh, if you want to see the all shortcut key of Eclipse then you have to press control shift L if you press control shift L then you will see the all shortcut keys are available for Eclipse in the rightmost corner of your Eclipse window ठीक है control shift L L L for London ठीक है now if for in another editor like notepad and all you have to open the command prompt for compiling the program but you will be surprised to know that while typing itself your compilation is done your edit I mean Eclipse is very smart no need to open the command prompt the compilation is done and you can see your dot class file automatically created under this bean folder open the bean folder you will see hello dot class file so automatically Eclipse is going to generate the dot class file for you into this bean folder. ठीक है? Let's assume you have some error inside your program. Then how we can detect this? Let's say you are missing the semicolon. Then here itself you will get a red color mark that will tell you a very clear message. Syntax error. If you bring your cursor here, then it will give you one message. Syntax error. Syntax error insert semicolon to complete block statement. So meaning is very clear you are missing the semicolon. So make sure that first of all you have to put the semicolon and then after you can go for running purpose. Till now you have a red color marks in the sense your program is not compiled successfully. And it is not compiled successfully then you can't run this program. This is mandatory. So you have to you have to remove all error. You have to Resolve the all compilation error then after you can proceed for running purpose. Again for running purpose also you don't need to open a separate command prompt. There is a green color button in your screen. If you click on this automatically your Eclipse will run this program and you will see the output also into the same window under the console section. Can you see your output here? So this is very interesting and it will be very uh, familiar with Eclipse after the couples of uh, project development under this Eclipse or application development of this in Eclipse and it's much better. Let me show you once again what I did, how I have created the application. After that what you need to do, file, new, Java project. Once you will select the Java project, next time it will give you the first option itself as a Java project. Click on Java project and this time I am giving the application to click on finish. Once again Eclipse has created application 2 for you with the same structure. SRC stands for source and BIN stands for binary. So right click on SRC once again. Then after go to new. and class give the class name whatever you want this time I'm giving the class name as a welcome click on finish give the main method m a i n control plus space bar enter main method is written s y s so system dot out dot bin talent and control space bar s y s so control space bar give whatever you want And if you want to open the same line once again, then control, alt and down button. Copy, paste. No need to do the copy separate, paste separate. Control plus alt plus down button. It will copy paste the previous line. But make sure that this shortcut is not working for every system. Some of the system, your screen will be reversed. So be clever to use this. Oh, okay. <laughs> in my system it's working it's some graphic settings so you have to take care of that so again to running this we have a shortcut key control plus F11 if you press control F11 then automatically your program will run successfully and you can see your output under the console section whatever you are given welcome to Java class so this is the basic for 
uh, application development and first global program into Java by Eclipse. Do you understand? Okay. Yes. Good. Shall we proceed now? Yes, sure. Okay. So, now uh, this will start. Let me give you the uh, quick brush up on certain things of basic also like data types and all. So that will make yourself confident. Sure. So next time again what you need to do whenever you are going to open the Eclipse icon if you click on this if you click on this icon then automatically it will ask you change your workspace or you can select the same workspace. So morning batch is already there you have to simply click on OK whatever application we have developed that application 1 and application 2 again it will be appear for you. So no need to change the workspace every time. For each concept you have to develop a separate topic for practice purpose, separate application actually. So from now onwards you will see the all program in Eclipse. You can see here even I have the application 1, application 2. For each concept of Java I have developed a separate separate folder. Okay? So you mean to say like workspace can be used to segregate your programs, every topic create a new workspace and use it, right? Yes, yes, yes. Workspace is one time job. Next time you have to always create a new Java project under the same workspace. Okay? Anyhow. The Java project create for every topic. Every time Java project I am creating, can you see here? And it will create a new folder for me. We are still in the same workspace. That you can see by going to the properties. And you can check your workspace like this way. This is my workspace location. D core one. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to share this application uh, with you also. Okay. And meanwhile, you also drop me the required topic which you are looking especially in Java. Okay. You told you have some uh, specific topic need to be covered. So that also try to send me. Okay, fine. So let me create one separate Java project with the name of data types. Click on finish. We got a data types folder automatically here. New. I'm just going to create one simple text file for your understanding node.txt. It's not a dot .java dot java file. So in in Java we have a totally how many data types do you know? Eight data types. Very good. What are those? You have to remember these all data types. Okay. So these are the eight data types we have in Java. Byte, sort, int, long, float, double, character, and boolean. So I have. Uh, uh, written it into the ascending order. So byte is the smallest one and double is the bigger one. It is taking the 8 byte space and it is taking the single byte space into your system. So uh, this is in the ascending order. These all are numeric type. Only this character and boolean are not numeric type. But totally we have a 8 data types mixed with that. Now if you are in the another programming language like C or C++, then you are declaring the variable like this way, you know, this is called declaration and this is called initialization. Yes or no? Declaration is the process in which you are confirming or compiler, we are going to use one certain variable of certain type. Initialization is the process in which we are giving the initial value to our variable so that we can use further in our program. So this is declaration and this is initialization. <coughs> Under the declaration section, once you declare, automatically certain byte space will be allocated into the memory and initialization is going to put certain value into that. 
but assume if you are not initializing do you know if you are in the C and C++ let's assume you are not initializing and you are trying to print that printf i if you print printf i here then do you know what will be the value in C or C++ it will give you some garbage value if you are not initializing your variable and you are trying to print that it will give you some garbage value because your operating system is going to store that variable with some garbage value but if you are in Java then you, you, you should not allow to tell it will give garbage value if you print SOP SOP stands for system dot out dot print align. can you guess what will be the output here if I print SOPI it will not give you the uh, it will give you zero how do you know this is the default value for every data as for byte also it is zero for sort also zero for int also zero for long also zero for float it is 0, 0.0 for double also it is 0, 0.0 for character it is a blank space that is byte code and for boolean it is a false so these are the default value for all data types you have to remember this all so in java if you are not declaring initializing any of your variable then it will take the default value so since we are printing the integer after declaration so it will take the value of integer default value that is zero okay. clear so there is no default data type actually there is a derived data type that will cover later yeah. Because uh, no, why I'm asking is, I mean, in one of the interviews, one person has asked me that what uh, Till my knowledge, I don't think so. There is a default data type actually, because it's not make any sense. You know, if you talk about. Yeah, that's what I mean. I still, I couldn't find that question anywhere. Maybe he meant something else. So I was just wondering. Probably default value they can ask, derived data type they can ask, but default data types we don't have in any programming language. Okay? Because it's like, you know, in, in, in Hadoop there's a default data type that's text. So in that concept only he asked me, okay, what is there in Java? So I was like... Is what is the default data type? What is the default data type in Hadoop? It's not data type, it's the default... Uh, so you can see here there's no any concept here huh, if you're talking about another programming language like JavaScript and all then there we have default data type that is the where but you can see in the Google suggestion also there is no any suggestion for default data type in Java. Can you see default variable type, default variable type, default data type values in Java, default data type of decimal in Java. There is no suggestion for default data type in Java. Default format like UPF8 Sorry? Default uh, data format or the default... Uh, no, even data format also you can't say. This is fixed. Default format is also not there because it's varying accordingly for according to your data type. Like your UTF-8 and all those things, right? So that's the, that's the text format. That is the that is for string, no? UTF universal text format UTF. Okay. No problem. That is for a string. And again, a string is not a data type in Java. We will come to know later. But still you are interested in that, try to get information and if you want some default data type then share with me. Take care. <laughs> Till my knowledge there is no default data types. Default values are there. Can you come near to your microphone and then you can speak to me so that I can hear you properly. Your voice is coming very slow. Um, it's fine, but not too much once again. I'm using my phone headphone because that system is not working. Okay, fine, no problem. So this is the data types, and uh, you want to see the all data types value also. 
then you can go to the create one program here src class a finish so let's say you are interested to check the default data types for any variable then i'm giving the int i try to make it as a static first and main method sysoi so if you run this program you will get the default value for integer that is 0 you will get output at a 0 like this way if you want to check for the any data types let's say I'm checking for the boolean sorry it's not the change I have a question for that why did why did you make it a static, I will tell you later, just I am showing you the default value. Can you see this is the false, if you want to check the cat, let's run this. As I told you, you will get a blank space. Can you see this is one of the byte code, that's a blank space. Okay? So like this way, you can check your all data types default value. Now, next topic is local variable. If these all are variable, you know, variable is nothing but which is changing the value and which we are going to declare while declaration whatever things we are going to give that is known as a variable. Okay. So now variable is having two scope, one is local and another one is global. So let's focus first on local variable. Local variable is nothing but the a variable which is declared inside any method body. So, you know very well in Java, whatever program we use to develop that all are under the class body. So, it doesn't matter it's a small program or a bigger program, you must have to give the class. So, can you see here there is a class body. Class is opening here and it is going in, closing in last. And inside this class, you can keep a number of members like methods, variables, whatever you want. So, main method is once again mandatory for running purpose. Many times this question is asked by the interviewer. If I remove this main method, whether this program will compiled or not, you have to say, of course, syntactically, there are two environments inside your program. One is compile time environment and another one is runtime environment. Compile time environment is always checking whether your program is syntactically correct or not. And runtime environment is always checking logically your program is correct or not. So, even though you are writing the class A open braces, close braces, syntactically it is correct your program will compile very successfully and especially in Eclipse if someone is asking you whether this program is compiled or not then you have to check whether there is any red color mark and if you don't found any red color mark then make sure that your program is compiled successfully but we can't run this program because we don't have main method so I kept the main method main method is only for running purpose not for compilation purpose now the variable which is declared inside the main method body or any method body that is known as local variable. Okay. So can you see here I have declared the variable inside the main method. So we can use this i inside the main method one day. We can't use this i outside the main method. It will give you compile time error. If you are trying to use like this, can you see you are getting the compile time error. That is known as a scope of a variable. This is the local to main method, so you can use only inside the main method. Again, there is a declaration and there is a initialization. If you want to print the value in the format of i equal to something, then you can, this is the syntax you have to follow. Since you know whatever things we are writing in double quotation, that is coming as usual. So what I have written here, i equal to here, and this is the i which you want to print their value. So to separate the double quotation and without double quotation, there is a syntax in Java, you have to put the plus operator. This is called delimiter. Delimiter in the sense separating the static and non-static resource. Whatever things you have written under the uh, double quotation that is known as a static resource in the sense it is never going to change their value. It is always fixed and whichever things are uh, fixed that is known as static. Then after, this is dynamic resource. Why it's dynamic resource? Because here you are printing i, but in the output you will get a value of i. So it is changing their value at the time of running. So whenever you have a static and dynamic both, then try to separate by plus operator. This is the syntax of Java. 
So if you run this program, you will get I equal to 10 as a output. Clear? So this is index you have to remember. So here you can see declaration is separate, initialization is separate. If you are interested, you can put the declaration plus initialization at the same line. No problem. You can comment this line double slash is the single line comment. If you put double slash, then meaning of this is very clear. You are saying to the compiler, ignore this line. Okay. So double slash is the single line comment. So what I did initially declaration was separate and initialization was separate but this time I have put the declaration plus initialization at the same time this is also acceptable again you will get the output as a 10 1 okay but the interesting point is that what will be if I'm not giving the i value here declared and then after I'm going to print the i what will be the output let's say I'm removing the i equal to 10 equal to 10 part since only I am going to declare it, then what will be the output? Mm -hmm. Come on. I equal to zero. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you are saying it will take the default value, but there is a slight limitation. That's what I captured this topic. You should know this. Default value is not applicable on local variable. Make sure that default value is only for global variable and global variable is nothing but whichever is declared inside your class body. This is called global variable. Okay. Since local variable is never taking their default value, so make sure that you will get an error. Can you see the red color mark here? There is a rule for local variable. Remember local variable should must be initialized before used if you have a local variable and if you're trying to use that if you're trying to print that then definitely you have to initialize it because compiler is never going to give the default value to the local variable and this is very very important point many people are knowing default value is applicable for every variable of java but it is not applicable on local make sure that Global variable is only taking default value, which we have seen in the previous program. Here you can see the local one and local one you must have to initialize. Until now you are not initializing, we will see this error. And if you bring your cursor to this error, it will give you the very clear message. The local variable I may not have been initialized. Okay? So you must have to initialize it. Doesn't matter after declaration or at the time of declaration, but it should must be initialized. This part is clear? Yes. Yes. One more interesting point as explains you should know. Let's assume you have a local variable but you are not using that. Mm -hmm. Then compiler will never give you error. This is also interesting. It's not like that. If you have local variable then you have to initialize it. The rule is saying till now you are not using I don't, I don't bother. Compiler is not going to give any error. So you have a local variable but you are not using that, you are simply printing the main. Then your program will compile also successfully and it will run also successfully. But the panga is, once you use that, then definitely it will give you compile time error and usage is nothing but printing the i. So here you are getting the error because you are using that. Once again in many of the examination you will find this question like this way also. There is to put the double quotation and then after i. So as we know, whatever things are inside the double quotation, that is coming as usual. So don't think like that. Here you are using the i. It is only for confusion purpose. You will get output also as a i. You will not get an i value here. So it's still we are not using. You can see warning. You will get a yellow color mark here. That is called warning. Red color mark is a error and yellow color mark is a warning. So this warning is saying to you, you have a local variable, but you didn't use that. You can ignore the warning, bring your cursor here, the value of local variable i is not used. So this is the warning, you can ignore the warning, it's not make any sense, TK. But you should not allow to ignore the uh, error, error always should be resolved then after you can run the program. So certain point, once again, let me remind you, local variable is a variable which is declared inside the main method or any method body. Second point, 
the scope of local variable is only inside that method in which it is declared third point local variable is never taking the default value fourth point local variable should must be initialized before use this is the features of local variable got it yeah fine chalo now we are interested into the global variable before going to global variable just try to understand the certain things you know very well inside the class whatever things are there that all are known as members what we used to say yes members so that's the reason we are defining the class is a member it is a collection of member variable and member function so member is of two types one is member variable and another one is the member function theek hai so in the class either it should be a member variable or either it should be a member function there is only two types of members in uh, class body and there is a two categories of members also either it should fall under the static or either it should fall under non static we have a huge discussion on this static and non static because if i believe doesn't matter your pressure or experience static and non static is very important topic many of the people are struggling over that so we have a discussion on that before that just remember inside class body whatever things are there that is known as members member is of two types member variable and member function and at the same time all members are falling either in the static categories or a non static categories theek hai now you can see here we have a how many members here 1 2 3 3 nothing but your main method totally we have a three method among them two are member variable and one is member function member function and member methods are same in java we used to say methods not a function function is for c and c++ but from jdk 1.8 onwards you can take function also because now java is supporting the function also there is a slight difference between the function and method function can be assigned to any variable okay let it be ignore it later i will tell you what is difference then you will confuse so just remember here what i am going to do i have given the one static int i and another one is non static j now as i told you member is of member either can be fall under two categories so you have to remember a static and non static how we can recognize that whoever member is having a static keyword that is known as a static members whoever is not having a static keyword that is known as non static but still these two are member variable and this is one of the member function because main method is also one of the method or a function so it is also a member of a class i told you whatever things are inside the class body that all are known as members now further member is divided into two types member variables where we have this i and j and member function or member method where we have this main method theek hai are you getting or not pavan so very basic one now as i told you either members should fall under a static categories or a non static so similarly you can see i and i is a static keyword having a static keyword so it is a static member and this is not having a static keyword so this is a non static member similarly the rule is saying wherever you found a static keyword inside your program make sure that that members are static you don't found a static then it is a non static so can you say main method is a static or non static static very good because in main method also we have a static keyword and make sure that you should not allow to change anything inside the main method main method is always same this is the signature of main method you should not allow to modify anything certain things you can modify that again i will give you one separate class for main method operations under that i will tell you what are the things you can change under the main method also because that question is also coming many time from interviewer side can be change this one can be change this one so don't worry 
I will take. <clears throat> but in general, I mean, in practice, do we ever do that? Uh, not exactly, but many, many. Sometimes we need to call our main method, but actually not. Main method we are not going to disturb at all. Okay. Okay. So, very good question. I mean, uh, hello, hello. Huh. So. We have a two-member variable here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply print the i value here. Let's keep some initial value, no problem. Int i equal to 10. Even though it will not give, it will take the default value. Can you see? If I'm not giving the 10 as a output, even though it is not giving error, the meaning is very clear. Global variable is taking the default value. And if you run this program, you will get zero as a output. Okay, since it is a global. How we can define the global variable? A variable which is declared inside directly class body those variables are known as global now what I'm going to do I'm going to give some initial value to this I so the 0 will be replaced by 19 and try to run this you will get output as a 10 not a 0 because you have given the value and once you have given the value that is going to overwrite the default value so very simple since it is a static and I have printed the static member inside the main method I am getting the output at the same time I am trying to print the J also but what I am going to get is error. So whether this error is due to not initialization the answer is no. It is not a matter of initialization. Since main method is a static so there is a rule. Compiler is saying you can use only a static member inside the a static main method. This is a static main method, so it should not allow to use the non-static. Since I was a static, so we have very easily we have used the I, but J is a non-static, so compiler is saying to you, you should not allow to use the non-static inside the main method because main method is a static. And that is the reason you are getting one error here. If you bring the cursor here, then it is saying very clear message to you cannot make a static reference to the non-static field J it is never possible so what I need to do I have to change the a static and once you made it as a static then your problem is resolved and I will get the output as a 10 and 20 also but actually it's not good it's not like that always we need to keep the static I'm saying to the compiler boss I don't want to change this let me give some other op options where we can use non-static inside the static method also. And this problem is due to your main method is a static. If you remove the static from your main method, then you can see your error is gone. Because Panga is with the static. But don't think you can run this program. We can modify it. Still the syntactically this method is clear. So there is no problem with the syntax. The panga is with the static because main method is saying I am a static and I will not allow the non-static member. So what compiler we have asked? I have asked give me the solution how we can use non-static into the static and for that purpose you have to create one instance and that is your object. How we can create the object of any class? Class name, object name, equal to operator, again new keyword and class name. This is the standard way to create an object of your Java program class. And with the A1, you can print like this, A1.j. So what you have seen here, if you want to use non-static member inside a static, then first of all you have to create that class object. And with the help of object, you can access the J. Now no need to make this J as a static. Even though it is a non-static, with the help of object inside the main method, you can access the J. There will be no impact in the output. You will still get the 10 and 20. So answer is very clear. If your members are static, then you can use anywhere inside your program without any restrictions. But if it is a non-static, then inside the static block or a method, you must have to create first object. Then after you can use this. This part is clear. So this is true for uh, 
any static method right not only main exactly any static, any static method and block also we have a lots of block also i will tell you there is a sib static initialization block oh. so for those okay. it okay. is very important so this rule is applicable not only for main method okay. wherever the static methods are there you must have to create the object first then after you can access this theek hai If you ask to me whether a static is all rounder and it is directly going to access, then I will tell you no. There is something hidden inside the static also. So if you are thinking I is alone here, then answer is no. Internally, actually, you have to write the static member with the help of class name. This is the proper way to use your static member. Class name, then after your I. But Compiler is very flexible for the static members. So whether you are writing class name or not, it is not bothering, and it is saying for you, I will write it. Again, there is no impact of output. You can see still 10 is there, and you want to see whether A is there or not. Then I will tell you in Eclipse, bring your cursor to near to I, and you can see internally there is a A dot I or not. Can you see this A dot I? So. internally static members are going to be used by a class name but people are ignoring this they are thinking we are directly accessing but in fact internally there is a class name actually you have to write a class name this is the better practice but if you are not writing then compiler is flexible for a static members they are saying i will write the class name for you so if you are thinking i is alone there it's not like that internally there is a class name the better way is to write the class name dot i theek hai so there is a very clear point here a static members are dependent on the uh, uh class name and non static members are dependent on the object now i hope you understood in the data types discussion why i have made this as a static because that time i didn't discuss the object and that is the reason i made it as a static to see you uh, saw you the default value you ask me why it is a static now probably you got the answer right that time yes, yes. if i made the non static i have to create a object and i was i was just about to beginning so i told you just uh, remember i have given i will give you the explanation later so in my class always if you found somewhere you are not going to clear then wait for the right moment definitely your doubt will be clear doesn't matter whether you are going to ask or not i know since i was also a student and still i am a good learner so what i i used to know what are the doubts people usually get and in this time of course you have a very good questions then you can ask but most probably doubt related things just have patience a bit you will get clarified very soon theek hai sure 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 okay so this is the funda of static and non static you must have to remember this A static members can be used directly into the class body anywhere, but internally always there is a class name. But non-static members can be used only by the object if you are in a static. If it is a non-static, then again you don't require anything to use the non-static member also. The main point is the static. But after this. Mr Pawan you need to do a lots of experiment if you want to learn something better what types of experiment you need to do is let's say if someone is asking you can we use a static member also by object idea is very simple they want to tell you ki whether instead of class name can we write a1 for a static also so this types of experiment should come from your side and then after you will be getting the lots of confidence let's try to give this a1 here let's check whether it's a compile time error the answer is of course not mm -hmm. you can use static member also by object but actually you will get one warning compiler will tell you boss whatever you are doing that is not the proper way to access the static member but still you have written then compiler has modified your object name by the class name once again can you see the yellow color mark this side this yellow color mark is saying to you the very clear message okay this is not the static way the static field a dot i can you see compiler has modified it as a a dot i should be accessed in the static way but i told you very clearly compiler is very flexible for static so 
whether you are writing or not, whether you are writing class name or not, whether you are writing object also, compiler is accepting it, it's not giving you any error, but you will get one warning and that warning is saying the static member way of access is not proper. Cool? But at the same time, if someone is asking you, can we use the non-static also by class name, then you have to say, no, it is never possible. You will get a compiler method. So reverse way is never possible. The compiler is only flexible for static, not for non-static. Okay, Mr. Pavan. So whatever I have covered for you, that is, I think, for the beginning day, it's okay. Even I have uh, one batch from the 8 o'clock. Give me five minutes time to do okay. some replacement. Take care. Tomorrow at the same time we'll see sure. once again with the 6:30 and make yourself uh, comfortable and make your system also comfortable. Try to install the go to meeting in your yeah. system. Yeah. So uh, even like I see there's a hundred person uses. Maybe because that is creating. So I would I mean keep uh, phone as a backup always. So even I mean even just uh, uh,